get them to put it all. Good evening, everyone. This is the regular board meeting of March 18th, 2024 uh, of the Park District Commissioners from the Lake Law Park District here in Lake County, Illinois. Calling this meeting together at 6.32. Um, uh, what I'd like to do first is have a call to order. If you could please work on Commissioner Greenfield. Here. Commissioner Lenny. Here. Commissioner Raymore. Here. Commissioner Reader. Here. Commissioner Walsh. Here. Commissioner Weber. Here. President Newman. Here. Uh, next is the approval of the agenda for this evening. And if someone would please make that motion. So moved. Second. And we'll call on it. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner Raymore? Yes. Commissioner Reader? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. President Newman? Yes. Next up on our agenda is the statement of visitors. This permits anyone who is with us tonight in attendance, um, as well as present via Zoom, to be able to address the board on any matters that are either on the agenda or not on the agenda, uh, but that pertaining to the Park District. Everyone who would like to make a statement would have up to three minutes to be able to speak to the board. So if there is someone, I can already see the little hands and discussions, and you're welcome, please. Thank you. Hi, my name is Ann Rodebeck. I live at 335 Briar Lane for just shy of 30 years. Um, I was happy to see that your um, on the agenda is your 100th anniversary celebration. So I came for a plug for that. Um, I figure 100 years ago when the park district was created, it was probably an intent to have green space and blue space for the community to enjoy, recreate, congregate, and also uh, for the native uh, animals that share our environment. And I know over time, you've had a lot of uh, specialty groups. You have your golf course, the pool, baseball, tennis courts, et cetera. But I'm hoping that for the 100th anniversary, you could do something as a part of a legacy for the actual green spaces and blue spaces. Um, we are such a wonderful, unique town that we have the lake with the beach, you have forests, we have prairies, and we have the most amazing rare ravines. And um, and thank you, I'm glad you guys are doing the tree survey for them and working on trying to keep them healthy and less invasive. But um, it, I just, one thing I thought of is perhaps like planting a hundred trees on Park District for the hundredth anniversary. You could involve the preschool, you can involve the after school program. Um, I've spent a lot of time at Artesian, as I'm sure many people have, watching baseball games. And um, the trees were a wonderful shelter. Now we've lost several there. That's an example where, as a legacy, obviously, you don't plant a tree and it's going to be shade for those watching games, but it will eventually. So that's sort of a prime area. Um, obviously, I know you guys can all think of other spots where trees would be welcome. Um, one thing I'll mention, uh, there was a study on emerald ash borer. And we lost 100 million trees in the United States. And those counties that were affected by it, which would include us, uh, actually have a higher mortality than those not affected. So trees have many benefits, but it's health for all in addition to beauty and all that. So that's my plug. I, I would say that you don't have to have big trees. You know, little trees do well too, especially if you're getting kids involved, especially when you're talking about 100 trees. But that's what I thought um, I wanted to mention to have you guys consider as you're creating your celebration plans. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. Hello, Janet Saul with All Need to Preserve and Long-Term Volunteer Educational uh, Environment Education for a person for the Lake County Forest Preserve. I love the idea of planting 100 trees. I will though back it. Do oak trees because oak trees oh, are a key source. I forgot to say native. Yes, native. Right. There's a key, keystone species. We're talking about leaving yes. a legacy with your oak trees. But I assume we did see that you were going to do the 100 year celebration that you were doing, um, you know, trying to celebrate. And I wanted to share that the ravines at Lake Bluff are just so, so unique. And very few, probably a handful of towns within Lake County could actually say that they have ravines in their community. And ravines have microclimates. So you could have one climate at the top of the ravine and then you go down to the bottom and you'll have a whole different ecosystem with plants and, and animals and different and the air quality is completely different. So 
I, yes, please, let's research, let's educate, and let's celebrate, because this is something that's very unique that only, like I said, a handful of towns in Lake County have, ac uh, have access to. And it's just a great thing to educate people to let them know that, hey, we're unique, and here's how we're, we're, we're unique. And, and for our kids, this is why we need to take care of it and really nurture it for another 100 years to build that legacy. So thank you, and congratulations on all that you've been doing. Thank you. Jeff, is there anybody on Zoom who would like to come as well? Oh, I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, I'm sorry. Wait, there's one person. Thank you. Hello, my name is Marietta Hans. I live at 600 Arbor Drive in Lake Bluff, and I'm also president of the Lake Bluff Garden Club. And the, the club was formed in 1917, and Ravine Park was their special place they were aware of all the beautiful native plants that were growing there. And in fact, back then, what they would do is go and visit new neighbors and tell them, by the way, you don't pull flowers out of the ravine because that was a common practice to take them out of it. So it's very close to the club's heart. And I'm just excited that you're thinking about doing more to protect the ravines, restore the ravines, because it's a beautiful legacy. And uh, speaking as a Longtime member of the Garden Club, it would be thrilling to see those ravines restored. I, I wouldn't ask any of you what you said. You don't pull what out of the ravine? Flowers. 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 Oh, oh, okay. They used to pull, like, yeah, the trillium. Sure. Yeah. They used to pull trillium, anything that was blooming, wild geraniums, trillium, orchids. Yeah, yeah. orchids, yes. And um, it was very common. So it was, we were very straightforward, like we are today. And they were the same way then, which is do not. Pull trillium, do not pull orchids, do not, and do not take them and plant them in your own yard. So, um, you know, that's that's our passion. And so it's great to hear that there's gonna be progress there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, see, if you've got everybody here who is present, is there someone on Zoom who would like to speak as well? Yes, Gail Damroth has a comment. Go ahead, Gail. Good evening. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Good evening. I'm speaking tonight because I didn't get a response to the, my letter to the park board, which includes a letter from Regis Charlo, president of the Lake Bluff Village Board, that is posted in the board packet tonight for this meeting. So I know you've received it. I'll email you the questions with his letter again tomorrow, hoping for a response. I, I'd like to know when you're going to actually talk to the neighbors of the park district. This is in regard to the pickleball. We are here, this is our livelihood, and we'd like to move this process forward. You are say you, you say you're working with the neighbors, even though we never agreed to the current hours, even though that you applied that we have. If you remember, it was the kind and nice pickleball players that brought down the days and long hours the park district was pushing for, and you've continued to try and increase at many steps along the way, even when your own facilities committee advised against it. There is nothing more telling to us that you do not care about the level of noise and distress the pickleball courts caused to the neighbors than the fact that you canceled the sound study that was scheduled in our backyard. How can you cancel a sound study? This tells the people in this town that you do not want to know the truth because how can you dispute actual data? We all know the court's placement was a mistake. People make mistakes and we understand that. Please move to fix it instead of finding any fight to keep them open and cause us, your own neighbors, further distress than you already have. Please just talk to us. Find a way forward for the players and for the neighbors because there are options. I will end this with a question that comes to the front of my mind. I tell others all the time to assume best intent from people. I cannot figure out your intentions in this situation, a situation where your actions are causing harm to others. So maybe if I frame it this way, if my house were your own parents' house, would you be acting in the same way? Maybe you can relate more to if my house were your grown kids' house who put their whole life and investment into their home, would you be acting in the same way? Please think of us when you are making decisions. We are residents, we are people, we are Lake Bluffers, and at one time we were the biggest fans and cheerleaders of the Park District which is why we bought our house 14 years ago, because when we we're deciding to make that offer, we did the research and found that the park district always partnered with the neighbors and there's a history to prove it. 
The first 10 to 11 years, we lived harmoniously with the Park District. Now your actions have caused us to lose most likely 50% of our next potential buyers out of the gate for $100,000 on our property value. Would you be acting this way if my house were your mom's home? Looking forward to hearing from you. Have a good night. Thank you. Is there anyone else who'd like to speak? No, that's everybody. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, on to our verbal communications. Uh, first off, from staff. Okay. Uh, I will just get to start off, and then, uh, and then Deputy Director Lincoln will jump in here with a little additional information. Did see on page four. Um, I put in my report. Um, most of the information. Uh, we, we got a second round of interviews for our HR, uh, full time HR person. That's going well. We hope to wrap that up at the end of this week uh, with the second round. Um, I did attend another legislative breakfast um, at the Northbrook Park District. Um, again, Senator Morrison had confirmed that she was attending. Wanted to uh, thank her in person for some of her support uh, that helped with that $600,000 outside grant that we received. Um, however, she was elusive and, and didn't, uh, she was kind of double booked and didn't make <laughs> the, the, the breakfast that day. So we'll uh, we'll try again through a different uh, avenue. But uh, nonetheless, met with several other uh, state reps and, and uh, politicians that day and, and park executives. Uh, and uh, another thing I want to mention, and I didn't put in my report, but our uh, we are hosting uh, the elections here tomorrow as a site. So it will be we'll scheduled to be in this room. Uh, we've moved it to the gymnasium because they needed to set up this evening. Uh, so they are ready to start in the morning. They show up about 5.15. We open at 5. So um, so we will be hosting that in the gymnasium. This is a change of venue for us. Um, and I think that's really all that I have. I'm turn it over to Jim. I know he's going to do a little update uh, on the app, which I know Commissioner Lamb had reached out and had some questions about. So Jim, why don't you go ahead? Yeah, why don't we start with the app? So uh, finally, uh, we're uh, towards the finish line here with the app. Uh, towards the end of last week, uh, I received notice that the developers um, have a uh, not quite a final version of it because we need to go through uh, utilizing some residents, uh, just some people to try it out and see what we need to what we need to change or tweak if we can. Uh, most importantly, we need to train staff. We haven't had the training yet. Um, I'm in the process of uh, scheduling that with uh, ActiveNet. I'm hopeful that'll either happen. Uh, Wednesday of this week or early next week. And then right after that, we're going to go right into uh, reaching out to uh, a few of you uh, to help try it out. Um, we have to go in and unclick and click things so that way toggle things that are on, things that are off. But uh, I think we're going to be launching this within the next two weeks after we go through um, uh, those individuals helping us out identify if there's any problems with the app. You know, hopefully there's no problem and we'll be able to launch it. So uh, it has taken quite a bit. It's been more on the Apple side of things, not Google Play. Um, they've had some struggles uh, with Apple. They're a little bit more restrictive. So um, we we got through that. That's most important thing. Uh, we have the ACON this uh, coming weekend. Uh, really excited about it. It's hopefully the weather hold, you know, uh, comes our way in favor because it was looking like there might be some snow headed on Friday. So uh, if a backup plan is to have it in the gym on uh, Friday or on um, Saturday. So we'll keep our fingers crossed. Hopefully we have good weather. Uh, we did open registration a couple weeks ago. Uh, registration actually went really smooth. We only had a couple of hiccups uh, with the registration, but um, other than that, we, we only heard from like two or three residents that were having a little bit of trouble, but we problem solved right on the spot and helped them through it. 
Uh, Mighty Sprouts, just to give you an update, is almost completely closed. Uh, so is uh, Camp Kickahow. Uh, so our early childhood camps, again, continue to really uh, fill up quickly. Uh, sailing Camp is uh, starting to uh, get registration. We did fill up on the, the evening for families. So we, that is closed on Sailing Camp, which is good. That we had no registration the weekend that we opened. Um, so we're trying to really promote Learn to Sail. All of our other camps are actually doing much better than they have in the past uh, at this point. So a teen traveler and athletic camp usually don't fill up until we get closer to the start date. They're already past 50% uh, being filled. So uh, that, that's a really good encouraging sign. Um, other than that, is there any other questions or comments? Jim, did you touch on the Shamrock? Oh, uh, yeah, our Shamrock um, scavenger uh, event went really well. Uh, for the first time, the event had almost uh, 60 participants. Uh, I saw President Beeler, you uh, posted a few things. Uh, we want to thank the Kiwanis Club. Uh, they volunteered and all the other volunteers that helped us. Uh, a really good start and just something uh, our rec manager, uh, Ben White, wanted to do. He brought that from his previous uh, employment. And uh, hopefully that'll grow. We're going to give it a, um, we're going to give it a try next year as well. It was it was a cute event to see families biking and scooting and everything through town looking for things. And then whoever was there with Kiwanis and his full shamrock <laughs> leprechaun regalia was pretty great. So any any other questions? Um, kudos on the camp. I mean, it's great job to see um addressing you out there on Zoom land to see the social media that's being posted about that, to see the pictures of the campers in previous years. And once again, it's that time of year. So yes, it great, is. Great. And I think the messaging about the beach being, you know, open will help the sailing camp yeah. too. Yeah. 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 Good. Good. Thank you. Um, anything else from staff? No, I think no? we haven't seen. All right. We don't have our attorney with us tonight, so no attorney will report. Um, anything from finance administration and future planning thing? We have not met since our last meeting, so I'm looking at a report. Um, uh, Parks and Beach Committee, we did meet for a long time. Um, <laughs> so we are going to have to follow up because we weren't able to finish our agenda for that um, morning. But um, we have two guests with us that day, uh, Ben Brum from Lake Love Youth Baseball, who gave a wonderful report about what's going to be happening in West uh, Park, uh, irrigation of the uh, baseball fields that we have, as well as Michelle Marevcha from Ebola. To, and those items will be on our agenda um, a little bit later today. Um, but it was a great meeting. And the last thing we still need to do is talk about beach erosion. And that's going to be a subsequent Okay. Anything else else from that, Nikki or Sue? No. No? Okay. Uh, uh, facilities and programs? We also have not had a meeting. Okay, Paul? We have also not met. All right, friends of Lakeville Parks in? We did meet. <laughs> <laughs> At five o'clock this evening. Um, a few things to report from that is um, we voted to approve uh, purchasing 15 push carts for right. the golf course. Yeah. So that will be of course sponsored from um, just as a refresher with the with the Rents Foundation, they have separate sort of categories. And so there was about four thousand or so in, uh, set aside for golf. And um, the golf committee had submitted a, a request to purchase those fifteen push carts. So that was approved this evening. So the logistics that we worked out with John Beeler and and so forth. So I'm very glad about that. That seemed to be a very well supported idea. So very good. Um, a lot of people in the committee nodding their heads. <laughs> yeah. yes, we need new cards. <laughs> cards out there. A good, like a really good request of that. So that's great. And then um, for the hundredth anniversary um, committee, the capital Can Can campaign committee continues to get organized. Um, as of now, there are there are just three folks that are getting organized, but they're really uh, ready for more committee members. So I think they'd like to build that committee up to, you know, probably 10 or so members, um, community members. So if you can think of anyone who is good at marketing, 
perhaps has some, has some fundraising background, something like that, who would be a good addition to that committee. We'd love to have them. They still have sort of a soft goal of around 5 million or so to raise. So we're looking at, so um, very well organized so far. So that's it. Um, agreed. And one of the soft promises I think that was made was is they're hosting coffee and things like that. But, I mean, we had a phenomenal meeting um, when Ellen Granda and John Birch ran um, that meeting to bring our two boards yeah. together. Um, so uh, definitely the board is behind that, but is they start tapping us to be members of the board and get out there and help represent and help raise funds. Um, it's important to us. We can't do it just on revenues from camp programs and tax dollars. So we need we need everybody's assistance at the time. So and I have a question. Can I Thanks. yes? It, is there an official position? There's fourteen thousand dollars outstanding from pickleball, mm -hmm. the commitment that the friends made for pickleball. What is happening with that? Is yeah. there an official position on that? Is that yeah, I, uh, the the intention is to honor that commitment. Um, so I'm not sure why it has not come through yet. I think it's just about the time of year, each year that they pay, so um, that they pay that uh, portion. So I, you know, I think we just can bring that up, you know, and, and get back on the agenda for future payment. But I think this is, I think spring was, this would be the third year in a row that they would be making that. Okay. Yeah, I think it's definitely works. Did you make a spring tomorrow? Is spring very Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, thank you, Ann. Uh, Sue, so, anything from Lavola side? Uh, no, just that we've been working in the Prairie Preserve, the one next to the golf course, getting ready for the Audubon grant. And John, is everything copacetic between? the board and the attorneys and the Audubon in terms of the work that the MOU that was needed for that grant. Yeah, I don't think I've seen the final uh, draft of that yet, but I mean, it, it sounded like we were on, on the same page. And initially the, the attorney was thought it was gonna be more on the part of the with that, um, with that agreement. And, the, right, and, and, I think and Michelle and I communicated today. Okay. And she thinks everything's on board. So okay. we're, good, we're good with timing. We want okay. to make sure that everything is submitted in time. And then I just want to let you know that um, the Get Boardwalk, which we got money for from the Lake Forest Garden Club last year, but we couldn't go forward because of permits with the Army Corps of Engineers. Um, that is scheduled to start at the end of March. We're not sure it'll depend on the weather, but we do anticipate it being done sometime before the end of the summer. But hopefully they have, they only think it's going to take a, six weeks, I think, to complete the boardwalk, to redo the entire boardwalk so you can walk all, all the way around. A lot of it's underwater a lot of the year. Yeah, that's it. Okay, thank you. Um, Commissioner comments. Okay. Um, president's report. Um, very quickly, um, met with John Hirsch, president of the Friends, over the weekend and had a terrific discussion about their um, capital campaign, which Ann spoke to as well. Um, we'll get into that a little bit more with a hundred year. Um, and also, I attended the village board meeting last Monday. Uh, to talk about our decision as a board um, with the zoning application for Pebble um, there were other meetings that were held, but I'm going to just say, let's keep going on another agenda. We'll have to go into those discussions. Um, next up, we have the consent agenda, which consists of for this evening our minutes of February 26, 2024, from the regular board meeting, the March 4th, 2024 special board meeting, the interest schedule for ACH payables for the period of February 15th, 2024, through March 13th, 2024, and of course, the purchase cards to be ratified. Of those four agenda items, is there any discussion or any questions that anyone would like to raise? I, I have quest, one question about, um, and this is on page 24 from Code Creative Services, Summer brochure Correction Reprint, $7,900. The printing summer brochure, I'm 
was 48, 49 of them. So that uh Co-created about yeah more than yeah. Uh, Jeff, can you uh can you chime in here on that that charge? What charge was it? It's uh Cook Creative Services a reprint of uh, the summer brochure for seventy nine twenty because there was a there was a mistake in the first invoice. Right, Jeff. That was an overpaid. That's correct. It yeah. was a, we had an overpaid uh, invoice the first time, but we got it accurate the second time. So we stopped the payment on the first one. This is the reissue. It was a reprint of the check. Oh, okay. Not reprint. Oh, it was a reprint of the check because they submitted an invoice that uh, did okay. not equate to. What the services was, and so they came back with the last. Okay. Did we already pay the previous one? I'm sorry. Had we already approved the previous one? The pay no. Uh, before the check got signed, uh, we held on to the check. Mm -hmm. I did. I did not sign the check. Okay, but was it in our payable report? I did. From, like last month. I just wondered, did we need a reversal? No. Okay. Okay. Well, that leads into my second question then. Did we use two different printers for our summer and brochure? Because one is both and one, one's coat and one's North Shore printers. Yes. So one is the developer and the other one is actually the printing. Okay. So like the typesetting and editing and all that, and then the physical printing. And then the charges um, for uh, the accounting services, is that <clears throat> number just for February alone? Um, I would look at the um, at the invoice that might have um, that might have been uh, um, <coughs> some of the January in there as well. Okay. You just follow up with me because yeah. on an annualized basis, sure. that's a pretty hefty number. And yeah. uh, for that, I think we'd be better served you know, having somebody in the house for probably less. Yeah, yeah, that's definitely temporary. Anything else? All right, uh, may I have a motion, please, then, to approve the four items of the consent agenda? So, second. You want to roll call, please? Commissioner Green? Yes. Commissioner Whiten? Yes. Commissioner Rayborn? Yes. Commissioner Reader? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Commissioner Wood? Yes. President Finney? Yes. Next item on our agenda is the finance uh, report uh, with our summary for months to date and year to date. Yes. Um, so, one thing I would um, it says that, um, and Commissioner Lane brought to my attention that, uh, um, let's see the, um, page 29, and then that right. operating surplus. Um, there was actually a formula on that, uh, Excel sheet that was not working properly. It went back with, uh, our interim finance person, Rich Rothman, and, and we uh, were able to find the problem with the formula corrected and printed the correct pages if anybody would like a copy of that. It's not $71,000, obviously, um, in that third line, uh, or that last line. So that should be uh, $638,028, which makes the bottom right net surplus $218,000. $211. So, you have copies if anybody would like. I, I reprinted a copy of that or that's been collected. But the numbers on the left are accurate. Yes. Okay. This one's going to have a good Okay, that's good. Thank you. So that's all. 
All right. Um, any other questions or comments on the financial report for this evening? I'll just make a comment that program revenue continues to be strong. It sounds like it's going to continue that in some of Although, that's good. Yeah, excellent. Um, amount of revenue, you know, with the administration, very strong start. Um, and we did talk about the I know these charts. We're going to adjust these charts, and then they're, uh, you know, there's a little feather. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> easier to read. So um, that will be in the next packets and we'll we'll take out some of that top space and bring that down a more <laughs> legible uh chart. On the upside. Um, <laughs> yeah, 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 and we're hoping to get there. We're <laughs> testing the yeah. That's exciting. Without including anything else, um, I have a motion then to approve the accept excuse me, the financial reports as presented with the corruption page. So moved. Second. Roll call. Mr. Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner Raymore? Yes. Commissioner Leader? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. President Vienna? Yes. On to new business and action items, our OSLA grant pool project update. Okay, so uh, with this project, we are um, just moving along. Um, we've uh, reached out um, for one of the, the points brought up at a prior meeting to the uh, engineer that was involved with our project before, Rich Clark, who's with um, the consulting company called Innovative Aquatic, they're part of uh, WT Engineering. Um, and asked if they had an architect that they work with. That's one of the ways, uh, again, you can, to save us the time of having to do an RFQ and spend an extra month you know, or more looking at um, architects and new engineers. You have one that you would have a relationship with, you've worked with in the past, uh, such as FGM, uh, the architect or the engineer, um, then, then you can go back and work with them in a new project. So that's what we were looking at. They are interested at WT, Rich Clark, in um, providing the proposal and think that it's possible to do it this year. Uh, it's, they acknowledge it's a tight timeline. Uh, they wanted to check on a few things. Uh, even talk to one of the construction companies to, um, to just see how, you know, discuss this particular project and, and Get some feedback from that uh, that level, you know what what they felt was possible. So they're um, working on providing a uh, proposal for us uh, for these uh, services to move forward. They weren't able to do it in time for this evening's meeting because they have different, you know, architect is that part of the engineering group, and you know all these. So they were working on this, and they felt that they could get it to us this week. Um, and again, that's what we talked about having the special board meeting on uh, next Monday night, and it would be you know, to hopefully approve that and move forward. So they all have that submitted by the end of the week, which I think is good news. That will give us the option if we choose to still go forward with the project this year and, um, <clears throat> and get started and then finish up by, you know, by summer of next year. So that was pretty good information. Um, and well, we'll look forward to getting that that uh, proposal and getting getting that out to the board and the schedule for that meeting. So again, we just just to confirm that we have a quorum for Monday, because I know that's pretty great, similar traveling, but it sounded like I think I heard that that Nikki, Paul, uh, Jennifer, and Sue will be there. And I think that's the only ones I heard. Sure, but that's enough. That's a quorum. So, um, so it looks like we'll be able to have that meeting and uh, and get it approved. Thank you. Um, and 
next month is when we hear for certain that the grant has been ratified. So that's when it's fully executed. Yeah, okay. yeah, okay. when it's it's in April. Okay. Wonderful. Um, all right. Uh on to our practice street 100 year anniversary um with a discussion. Um there are listening to the friends board tonight was really interesting because they talked about um their capital campaign and uh, they used the word north star yeah. so they're looking for um discussing for continuing discussions with the district board what they would earmark their campaign for is it going to be the beach is it going to be a, a pool is it going to be combination of the two and how are we going to work with them and develop that because their goal is to get this capital campaign obviously coincide with the 100 years. One of the things they talk about as well is a series of events that could occur to hopefully culminate in, um, how can I nicely put this? Us stealing the village's 100 year plus celebration in September, so to speak. Um, because I don't know, and I, I don't know, Sue, if you've heard, I just, okay, yeah. we don't know if the village is once again doing their 125 they, plus. I mean, they, I think they play it. They, they, they sent the uh, when they sent the letter, the thank you letter, and in, in check, um, in the fall, I think they, they mentioned looking forward to. One more year of 105 plus. Yeah. The one so eighth or ninth, whatever it would be. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we know uh, that the 4th of July will um, salute the Park District 100 year as the Grand Marshals for 2025, which could be a great way to kick things off. Um, we know that the History Museum has already said that they will work with us to plan something, you know, historically looking at, and I like the word that I heard tonight of legacy, because that's really what this is all about. Um, there's talk about, and, and maybe if you could talk a little bit more of the golf committee hosting. They didn't really elaborate on that very much. <clears throat> They're just in the ideas. It is the idea is, I think, to bring in a bunch of different groups around town. Okay. You know, I'm trying to tap into. Yeah, I think they were talking about golf having them be a fundraiser for yeah. the uh, for the foundation. Yeah, and and this could also be potentially the time that um, West Park would be complete. And we talked before about the naming um, of Porter Field out there, um, as well as the dedication or rededication, if we could, or telling the story behind all the other parks that we've named. Um, so it's starting, you know, these little ideas are starting to come together as to what kind of events can be done throughout uh, the summer period, hopefully culminating in September to be able to say happy birthday, 100 years for our district. But I think at this point, um, I'd like to have more discussion with the friends. <laughs> um, they've got two very uh, motivated and um i'm going to say visionary folks who are working with john Hirsch. please remind me of their last names carrie i wrote them down it's ann jacobs and jacobs um uh, and carrie tracy brand new to the book so yeah um Tra carrie tracy yeah carrie tracy is the other did i get that right yeah Yes, I think yes. that's perfect. Okay, all right. So these two women have a very strong background in marketing and we carry um helped put together the Olympic bid that we had in Chicago a number of years ago. Mm -hmm. Um so they are looking for people to join them in putting together the campaign. Um, but I think we also need to start looking at pulling other partners of the park district together too and saying, how can we work with Bolo, how can we work with the history museum? How can we work with schools, other entities to be able to say, um, they've been our partners for so many years. Let's celebrate each one of these parts of the park district and what kind of events can we do put together? Any other? No, I think that's great. No, that's exactly right. No, no. Yeah. Okay. The so key is building, the key is building the committee right now. Yeah. The, the golf committee talked about our last meeting we talked about putting together a golf outing for this year which is still the plan um 
we were not talking about fundraising. This was just right. thought of. Right. Um, that we would, that the park district would sponsor as opposed to something that golf divisions would sponsor. Um, so, you know, if friends wanted to step in, not this year, but next year, and do something there. Um, yeah, I think they would. You know, then, then we certainly can do that. And uh, we, we have people on the golf committee, we have a few people who were involved in the original fundraising outing that we did six years ago, now almost six years ago. So we have some experience in, uh, you know, where to go and what you can do and so on and so forth. Great. Can we do a hundred events? And, and, and I, I know and it wasn't like big events like golf outing. I mean, like, you know, like we used to do that go walk, you know, do like an anniversary of a go walk, do a paddle, you know, like a paddle meetup, do a pickleball meetup, do a, you know, just little things that are marked on a calendar and there ends up being a hundred of them. That, and some, they don't need a lot of organization. They don't need, you or, know, or the groups organize it, like the yeah. paddles yes. people yeah. organize it. And then they just make a great a yeah. list. And yeah, like so every, I think every, that you already do, but you just put it on a list. That's right. a great idea. Right. And then and it's and then you see it all there and people can try whatever it is, a hundred different things. Because it's a year. Yeah. And I think one of the things, um, and I think we were uh, as board members copied down a number of um, letters that came to the board about uh, a meeting that was recently held with the native planting group. Um it's the ravine. The ravine is what started it all. This was, you know, again, we we're so pleased that we worked with Cliff Miller again to update our ravine plan um, and to be able to use that as one of the events as well. I'm talking Just about the baseball fields. You know, I mean, there's some of the, half the things you mentioned, you got to 12, you know, like in yeah. the things that you were just talking about. So yeah. I think it would be easy enough to, it sounds like a big undertaking and it sounds like it would be a cool thing, but I really don't think. Yeah, I mean, you could do like the baseball would be like the opening brand day, but it would be a big celebration. Right. They could be in charge of it. And bringing the partners back again, like they would take the lead, but we would create like a calendar. These are all the 100 things and start from the beginning. Again, you would do the skiing, the cross country, you could do an event like, hey, today yeah. we're going to do like a fun, we'll have, but they would lead it. Right. So that you don't like, we're not putting burden on the staff. And there can be multiple things like on the baseball day, maybe there's five events, you know, like maybe that takes off a handful, you know, and even so I think, I think it's doable. Yeah, if you work yeah. with the party, so it's probably calendar, like that. Yeah. So visual is the. I mean, do we want to appoint a, a, our own committee? They do this. Of outside people to look at different events that we can do. Um, we have. That, that's a good question, and I've had um, some very nice talks with people who have served on um, Fourth of July committee. Uh, the the like what says the I'm gonna say one twenty five. See you in a second. Um, and it's the same people that keep getting tapped for these things. And I think some of these people are saying, you know, our, my energy <laughs> um, is, you know, you can do it for a couple of years and then I think you kind of get tapped dry. Um, I think it would, well, there would be some new people. I have an idea. Have an idea. Yeah. We had multiple people apply to be trustees for the Friends yeah. Foundation. And we selected four out of, was it 10? Nine, I think. Nine? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So we could go back to some of those folks. Okay. And that's just a reason within the last couple of months. Okay. Yeah, so if you have like 100 events and you have about 20 partners we have, and you break that up, that's not, I mean, it's very doable if you just break it up. We, for the golf community, we've had people be a lot of it. Yeah. You know, that, those are really good. Yeah, some people yeah. like this. Yeah. <laughs> that's what Jeff is. <laughs> Chat. So, so the and the idea would be to fundraise at each of those events or not? You could, but I think the the bigger thing is just to promote everything and the culmination of it. Like I see them all yeah. laid out on the calendar. You know, like I, yeah. I want, like I want to you know see that and have that just be the thing, and it goes with the you know whatever the logo ends up being, whatever that everything ends up being. These are the hundred events. That you yeah. have to the and it goes back to like the flyer, the flyer that you guys put out with right. all the things that the park district has to offer. And you're right. going back to that mm -hmm. whole like. This is how we touch your lives. And then that's what you're doing again by it almost like copy and paste yep. of all the different things. For 100 years. Yeah. It just reminds me, so I think the Friends is going to come up with the logo for the campaign. The campaign. 
And I think if so, whatever whatever their theme is going to be, I'd like to yeah, we need to kind of work on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I was just a thought. I, I think it's a too much fundraising attached to these events. I don't think that's the part. Yeah, I think that was like, people who are right, celebrating. Right, right, right. I agree. I think and, it was the idea of the the fundraisers. Yeah. 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 You know, what, what you can do with the golf <laughs> you know, one event, and there might be other events. We had a silent. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to fundraise, but you're not. Right. Yeah, you know. You're not asking people to write a check. Right. They go in their golf clubs yeah, or whatever. You know, a lot of yeah. things. And, and yeah. people have a ton of that. Yeah. So that's if we can do that kind. Of, but otherwise, I hate to see every event. No, I should be just fun. Just 100 yeah. fun things. I agree. And there's even like, I don't know, I remember seeing it that the museum put out and they had like all the fun things that happened in like in the summer back in like when it first was open, had like the egg raise, I don't know, you go oh, yeah, eggs on the beach. Yeah, eggs on the beach and like really cool old school um, fun things that they did at the beach, like almost carnival style. You can kind of dig up some, like just bring back some of those events, like some old school events, you know, like just go retro. Yeah, I did see there was a uh, brochure many years ago that did like something from, you know, it had a lot of pictures from like, Early, yeah, from the beach. Yeah, yeah. early, you know, uh, activities and, and events. It was like black and white, you know, but so that's something, you know, we can try to tie in like a hundred years, you know, what's changed. Or... So I, I just wanted to sweep out a committee so that we can get all these ideas collated and organized and, mm -hmm. you know, rather than us just go back and forth with, yeah, with different ideas. I think we're going to get it lost. I propose simplifying this a little bit rather than trying to coordinate this many events. Um, my kids love checklists. They love things like that, mm -hmm. you know, whether it's school or even around the house. It's a nice little way to actually get some chores done. Um, and just, I feel like, you know, having like a, you know, a handout, like a hundred things to do, you know, related to Lake Bluff Parks, maybe hand them out at program events, you hand them out at summer camps, preschool, I'll get the elementary school right. off. Um, you know, I could see my kids and their friends, you know, coming home and be like, hey, look at this, let's do all these things this summer, you know, and then they compare notes with their friends and just kind of a you know, interesting way to get you know, everyone different. involved. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, if, if, if you even got like a stamp for each of those, and then you get yep. enough, you know, maybe you stamp stickers, you, you know, get a, a, a yeah, free program or something from the park district. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think, I think it's important to have a couple of like, you know, kind of keystone events, like, you know, something like golf course or, you know, hey, you know, I thought the emails today were great, like a tour through or being part of you know, have the, just a handful of like the big organizational yeah. things because organizing anything small or large is a lot of work. Something at the beach. Yeah, definitely. Okay. Um, so what we can do that. Then is um if anyone's interested in working with me on this, we can make it reach back to these folks who we have asked to participate from other the friends or from the golf committee, some other things, see if they would like to be part of this. Um, I will be working with um Ann and with the friends um to see about their campaign. I think having another joint meeting with our uh, the friends board would be really terrific so that we can hear about their campaign goals, their ideas, and then really get this um, launched. So, okay. Good, good. Um, pickleball, <laughs> RIO zoning, update. Okay, well, um, we did get the application in uh, last week, um, uh, Monday, and this President Dealer mentioned she attended the meeting as well. Um, the uh, and we knew that we needed to get supplemental information in with the application. Um, we were just uh, just uh, at least able to get you know application put together and and, and sent in to the village on Friday. Um, uh, Deputy Director Lakeman and myself met with uh, Drew and uh, his assistant Clara uh, at the village to discuss uh, what's needed. Um, so there are a few things. Um, 
that you know we had narrated with our um, our visit there, and, and one was that they were um, indicating Drew was indicating that the uh, the the RIO application needs to be for the entire uh, park for each park, and not just a site in you know, like the pickleball. I said that's how the RIO is set up right now. It had to be some sort of an exception that we only want to do one portion of a park. Uh, he thought, you know, it would be in our best interest because it would help what's getting ready for the full project. I already have an RIO for Blair. Um, we did, you know, note some concerns about that and also noted that, you know, what the board had approved was pretty specific, which was the pickleball uh, for the two locations. And I thought that's mostly what our conversations had been, um, you know, like a couple of meetings prior. Um, so that's still a point that needs to be worked out. Um, the uh, he did offer that the village uh, staff would would assist with printing any of the maps that needed to go in to put the plan together uh, with some of the measurements, and it was just you know putting in you know basically an inventory that's there. Um, that. Um, Yeah, they were working, you know, towards uh, trying to get all the information together to be ready for the April 17th meeting. Um, John, is that the April 17th? Is that PCCBA? Yes. Okay. For some reason, I thought it was the 24th, but you're saying it's the 17th of April. Yeah. I, okay. uh, yes, I had, had a meeting of the 17th. I'll go back and check, but I think that that's, that was a PCCBA meeting. Okay. Um, he did say that they that the the village had contacted their uh, sound consultant um, to check their availability and and moving forward with this. And I had noted that um, you know that they should hold on that for now. That I needed to uh, come back and, and speak with uh, President Beeler about that. Um, and then the other, uh, I think last item that we had discussed was, you know, the establishing the hours um, and, and uh, what was, I guess, discussed in some of our previous meetings was that, you know, the, as far as talking about the current hours, the, you know, kind of the restricted hours that we're using at Blair, if those would be used or if there's a change to shift a couple of those days from, you know, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday to Thursday, Friday, Saturday for open play. At that, I guess we were told at the time that was a you know it could be administrative decision and process um, for that. Uh, so there's still some, I guess, some discussion and clarity that needs to go on with that point. So that has not been yet finalized as far as um, you know. But again, what we were told was that the you know will be allowed to. Um, continue with the hours that we have at least during the review process. So we still need to, uh, I guess, clarify that that point. John, I have a question. I was under the impression that when the zoning was changed in 2018, that we were grandfathered in, that our facilities at Blair Park or at all, well, at Blair Park, were grandfathered in and not in need of going through the real process of that. Is, is that understanding correct? So like the things that are not under the special use permit, are you saying? The facilities at Blair that are not under the special use permit or including those that are under the special use permit? Including those. So I think that's correct. I think for all the parks, schools, um, I believe I heard the Bruce say that the village did that you know, for itself, and it has not gone through the RIO process for its properties uh, as well, or updated those because maybe it's not changed the use. But yes, that was, I believe, what was said at the time was that what was there, you know, is grandfathered in and allowed to continue. So if we then 
went through the real process for the entire park, does that mean they're undoing the grandfather and it, giving new approvals to things that were already approved? Um, I asked that question. His uh, response was that uh, the, the staff and the committee would be directing and focusing all the conversation uh, on pickleball and not on the, the rest. The rest is just acknowledging what you have there and that's going to remain uh, in place. We in already have that. Yes. So why, why should we apply for something we already have? That was, he said they wouldn't, be, if it was going to be an RIO for a specific part of uh, property, not the entire property, then that has to be an exception because that's not how their process works. They typically do it for the whole site. So it's kind of a circular argument, right? So we need clarity on that, like ASAP. And yes. I hate to be, you know, firm on this one, but, you know, John, you were kind of led down this path and we were made pretty clear we don't want to open up any type of door here to anything outside of pickleball. I think everyone is very, very clear about that. So we need to understand what we're getting into before we go anywhere. Mm -hmm. I agree. So when will we when will we have this understanding? Yeah, I think that uh we will work on getting that this week, you know, pretty quickly and then Offer that we can do within our small group meeting if that's you know if that's helpful or um, John, you know. you're the executive director. I'm sorry, but like you know, bringing all of us in here like is only going to get so far. Like you know, you're the one in charge of all of this, and we are effectively a jumping board here. So you really, from my perspective, you need to get to the bottom of this and report back. Yeah, I'm happy to to do that. Just to keep working on it. I mean, I think that it felt like. Um, you know, we had the meetings where we kind of led that path. You know, this is, you know, we can focus this on pickleball. And then when we got there on Friday, it's like, no, this needs to be everything with the park. So um, that's that wasn't our understanding. And I just made the switch. <laughs> it felt a little bit like that. That wasn't what we had discussed in the break. It wasn't what the board approved. The board's motion was very specific. Um, so that's, you know, what I, I told them. And I'm happy to. You know, to go back with that at that point and say that's still you know the board's uh, also the board's you know consensus as well. I know we don't have the sign for approval or change anything this evening. Well, especially if he didn't give you anything in writing, you know he said that's their practice, but it, unless it's in the you know the whole Rio document, I think there's chance to challenge that for and sure that, and the whole real process is so new anyway the village has not even gone through it you know they can't yeah. know that up to the beginning of so yeah um we had to have our application completed by what date wasn't it tomorrow it was monday last night it was it was in by monday it last was, monday yeah yeah we, 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 we got it okay. Okay. So, in so it's in it's and in. now they're saying they are they're changing it it's not complete because it doesn't include all of the property. Yeah, we 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 put the application based on what our discussion was when the board voted, um, which was to to focus. We on need to be minutes of their meetings or something that changed the ruling for the Rio because that wasn't clear. I mean, that's my feeling on it. I don't... I think yeah, we open up a Pandora's box. And there's no need to. Mm -hmm. it, it's not fair to put us through a process where the directions aren't clear. And because then we're at the whim. And I think it's sounding like it's too subjective. Yeah, I did. I mean, I tried to have it share, but I, I really summarized, you know, all of the okay. points from our meeting on Friday and said that to Drew, and then, uh, you know, he called back to discuss it. So I, I don't have any response in writing, but, um, yeah, I, I think we definitely still need some better clarity on this. Not the, rules, the rules of the game changed once we put our pieces on the board. <laughs> I'm sorry? The rules of the game changed once we put our pieces on the board, it sounds like. 
when you met with him last time, I don't know if it was a tribal or are there other minutes? Is there some way to document what happened in those meetings so the rules don't change after the fact? Because it's we went in on good faith based on what we heard, and now suddenly it's changed. And I guess I'm questioning maybe we need to record and or follow up with emails that are basically minutes of the meeting to make sure it's clear. I hate to do that, but there's a trust issue I see. <laughs> There's typically not minutes because there's it's not a you know it's a quorum of either boards so. So everybody goes back with their own idea of what happened. And it, yes, although I mean we try to keep notes to keep our uh, you know information as clear as we can. Yeah, but I think we do have the notes of them saying we need to apply by. Mm -hmm. So we do have that. Yeah. And we did the application like they asked us to do, and we decided as a group. So I think we do have the documentation. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think they asked for a decision by a certain date, and then the application by a certain date. We met both. Um, you know, the board made a decision, and then we put in the application on those uh, lines. And then so. after we submitted the application, they changed. Mm -hmm. I think mean, we. One of the concerns about opening up the RAO to the entirety of both Artesian as well as Blair is how long it's going to take then, because you're right, you're not just talking about a certain part of the property, you're talking about the whole thing, but what you also said as well, John, is that the discussion is then on every, uh, the, the citizen discussion will be on every single aspect of the park. So that brings in the pool, that brings in the golf, that brings in the baseball fields, that brings in, you know, every single, the, the playground at Artesian, everything that's there because public comment is, can be done on that. Um, the ravine, the wetlands. Yeah, that's we, we just can't. It, it's, it was, I mean, it was meant to be so that there wasn't so much. That was the whole purpose of the Rio. I mean, if you read the minutes, it was to cut down on the permitting process and the. So, John, how did, you, in the minutes. how did you leave the meeting with Rue? Was it the understanding that you're going to bring it back to the board and see if we wanted to go through with the whole process? Well, um, I, I told him that I would come back to the board and that we would uh, take a look at this. It wasn't, I didn't say whether we would decide to continue or decide to not continue or. Didn't really attach anything like that to it. Yeah, I think I we were just talked to Jeff briefly before we started the meeting tonight, hearing about this discussion with Drew. Um, if it stays on the level of village administrator and executive director, which is really the way the conversation should go at this point, we made our decision as a board as to what we submitted and it was done in compliance with what the village asked of us. And is you continue with Drew, see, he has authority, you have authority to be able to make decisions about going forward, you know where we are as a board, um, and see where we need to go. We've got another meeting coming up next week, um, so, uh, yeah, we, we, we need to hear what's hard and fast and what's, what's not. Okay. He he did. I mean, he called again today. Um, you know, it sounded like again, definitely sounded in, interested in, in working with us to to get through this process and, and to try to ensure it. So he said, you know, if he wanted, if we wanted their attorney to talk to our attorneys for to, you know, if we needed some assurances or if he needed to talk to the board, you know, he was willing to do that. But you know, that they want to. Work with us, and we both said the same thing. We don't want to derail this. Or we don't want to start over. Um, it's already been drug out for eight or nine months, and we need to move forward. So, I think, but again, I think I'd go back to like we've already made our position clear. Yeah. 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 So there's no. Let's move forward with the what we agreed to do. Right. Yeah. I, think I, don't, I don't think we need to talk about it. No, we don't. I think the two key so. points is what you said, Emily. What was what was discussed at the time the Rio was created, and also the the grandfather. We should probably make sure because 
those two points are what we're going on. And um, just that to me is a solid ground to stand on from a negotiation standpoint or response standpoint, not negotiation. Correct. Yep. So we don't need any more. We don't need attorneys to talk to each other. We don't need no. Drew to come talk to us. Yeah. We so he's always meeting. welcome at a meeting, right? But on this particular topic, I think we've made ourselves clear. Yeah, we did exactly what they asked us. To right. Do. Correct. Yes, we have vision. Yeah. yeah. So, so, so I'm assuming forward. we're moving forward, and if our application will be at the April 17th meeting. I think. Okay. I think communication back could be that we look forward to following through with the application that we've already submitted. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for that update. Uh, 2024 Sunrise Beach Operation Plan approval. Um, this came from staff. Uh, very thoughtful uh, suggestions uh, about best operations for the summer, especially with the South Beach opening up again. Um, this came from the Parks and Beach Community and is now put forward to the board. Um, keep in mind that the Lake Luck Yacht Club will not have a real structure per se down there, but they will get to find some way to keep the, the safety boats and the um, boats with the sailing program down at the beach under lock and key, so there's no problem with anything under there. <laughs> I've seen Jim smiling about that. Um, but um, other than that, how to best look at um, the operations? So I guess, John, sure. Jim? I'll, I'll just get yeah. started. I'll turn it over to Jim. Uh, again, this is for a um, point that uh, we've had through meeting with staff uh, and in meeting with Parks and Beach uh, Committee. In talking about some of these items um, and just working out a you know the best plan and best information is that you know of this is that we do get the beach back you know with that construction pause from Memorial Day Labor Day. Uh, so with that, Jim, if you want to just uh, touch on some of the highlights of uh, the memo. Yeah. So um, I'll go through. Some of the important uh, bullet points uh, for this coming summer. Uh, hopefully, you know, we're, we're getting closer to having um, uh, the full usage of the beach. Uh, but the most important thing, I think, will be the, the parking and what's allowed to come down the access road uh, throughout the summer. So uh, between Memorial Day and Labor Day, uh, we will have limited parking in that parking lot area, mainly for ADA purposes. Um, or if there's parties happening, they might have a vehicle down there as well. Um, boat trailers uh, will not be allowed. Uh, in the past, boat trailers were not allowed to be stored down at the beach anyway, but they're not going to be um, allowed to be left at the South Beach or in the parking lot. Okay. Uh, we will try to figure out how to section off an area for uh, paddleboard dollies. So people who can wheel them down the access road safely, uh, that we can have a, maybe a parking area for that, um, either on the parking lot or maybe right when you get into North Beach or South Beach. We'll have to figure that out once NSWRD opens up the, the beach because we don't even know how that all looks right now because we can't get back there. Um, I did talk to the Yacht Club. I talked to the Commodore, uh, Gretchen Seymour, and um, it, was, it was a great conversation. I told her my concern is having vehicles coming down with sunfish boats and with paddle boards and kayaks and, you know, and whatnot on just all different times and taking up the access road and making it safe for patrons. And I said, I have an idea. Why don't we maybe come up with some sort of reservation system and to stagger times for people to come down there? She thought that was uh, a really good idea and that the Yacht Club would be willing to work with the park district on you know, how we can do that. And it, it, again, we know people aren't going to follow the rules. We know that they're going to go down and 
staff will just have to handle it. And hopefully we just condition people early in the season and it gets better like it did last year. I mean, we, we felt we had a pretty good summer, even with some of the, with all the restrictions and with people not adhering to our policies in the beginning, they really did start to listen and realize what, what's happening here. So um, we will make sure that we have appropriate signage with Q, you know, with the QR code as well. So people have understand the guidelines for the summer. Um, shelter reservations, we're only going to do Memorial Day weekend through Labor Day weekend. And, and that'll be it because we don't know after Labor Day what the um, parking lot's going to look like because they're not sure they're going to finish up that, that part of the project. So it's best if we just say, okay, we don't have that many rentals. We're going to be done after Labor Day. Um, that, that's pretty much the, the big items. If anybody has questions, is anybody from especially uh, Commissioner Raynor or um, uh, President Beeler or, or Commissioner Walsh from the Parks and Beach Committee, any no. additional comments? First off, uh, uh, thank you to Cindy Fletcher for the work that she did last summer with putting out communication and stopping people from putting their earbuds in and walking down those ramps when there are big construction trucks coming down there. Thank you to Diane Zavitz for all the work she did and Jim with that you did with staff with really training them on how to deal with people in Lake Bluff um, and people outside of Lake Bluff trying to use the beach last summer and the road and everything else. Um, you guys are smiling about it now, but in the thick of it last year, there was a lot going on. And I think this is a, a terrific suggestion from staff for a very practical way to look for our ability to use the beach in some which is, again, thank you to North Shore Reclamation for that. Yeah, and thank you, Jen. You've had a couple tough years for the beach. Yeah. <laughs> I do think between your, your team and Cindy, it was amazing last year. Well, as long as I don't give out my cell phone number, I'm good. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, that happened in the beginning of the summer. I do have the number to the uh, the phone down in Egypt. So, <laughs> so we're going to have a big surprise come uh, Memorial Day uh, with whatever is down there on South Beach. Um, but we'll this this is but, um, if there's any, nothing else, can I have a motion then to adopt and implement the temporary guidelines for uh, summer of 2024? So moved. Okay. Do you roll call with it, Marcia? Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner Raymore? Yes. Commissioner Reeder? Yes. Commissioner Walls? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. President Bingham? Yes. Uh, last item on our new business is the Ravine Park Tree Inventory. Um, as mentioned before, Michelle Marevchek from um, Ebola was a guest in our Parks and Beach Committee. Um, and uh, this woman puts in so many hours with Lagola and she has had an incredible um, uh, success in scoring many grants for Lagola, which is terrific. Um, sometimes it's funding, sometimes it's funding plus hours put in. Uh, but one of the things she said in order to look for grants um, as well as to start addressing close uh, proposal for the ravine work is to have a tree inventory put in place. This gives everybody, and especially the ravine park neighbors, um, the comfort that we know which trees are going to be um, cut down, which trees are going to be, and I love this new word, girdle. <laughs> I learned so many new words with Maywood Park District using girdle trees, um, and which trees get, uh, need to be there for root structure, for canopy, for everything else. So the inventory is five thousand dollars. Well, we're we're asking for uh, you know if there's consensus with the board um, it, to approve a number not to exceed six thousand. We think it's probably going to be under five thousand. There were a couple of different quotes um, that uh, Lavola had Ben Miller had, had uh, received, and so we're looking at those. One was over five thousand, but it was some extra uh, digital. Mapping maybe that with the inventory, and we wanted to see what the village did with their tree inventory, and maybe to see if it makes sense to have the match. So we're just asking, uh, or I'm asking the board to be comfortable while approving up to uh, not to exceed six thousand dollar number for that. And we did try to do that work this year. Yeah, the the 
play course, free info is really cool. You can go online and you can see how big the tree is, like it's what species it is. That's actually really cool. So if you guys have time, I know that's weird, but I think it's very cool. <laughs> and so it would be really awesome to have it for the ravine. So I think it works with the plan of having a plan and then going yeah, to plan exactly what you're doing. You're right. And it's it's what we need as part of the, the plan, the clips update and to use that and then to work in the phase, you know, approach of how we then you know deal with those uh as you say the curve like removal or what needs to be done for the different uh trees that are in there. So this will all be part of the plan. Thank you. I think just for the timing, uh talking to uh, Michelle, they, I think it sound like you know it'll be a little bit more anchored. We wait until there's leaves on the trees, you know, for them to do the inventory and have it be a little bit more accurate. So the sooner she can get the inventory, the sooner she can put. She's actually going to put a plan in place to say this tree will come down. This will be girl, very, very specific, and then the timeline because it's not going to all get done at once. But then once all that is done, then we can start having the conversation with the neighbors, which we all agreed was a thing to do, mm -hmm. and then we can start the work, which would coincide with next fall. So the sooner we can get the inventory done, the sooner we can be ready to start actually getting work and. The other important thing is that windows open for grants and Michelle has every intention of getting as many grants if they're available as possible. And they're all tied to, in the, because this is tied to the lake, there's some significant grants out there. We think there might be an opportunity. So, but we've got to be ready to go. Yes. Yeah. I'm seeing that. So, okay, so, so yeah, can we call it as two? <laughs> <laughs> Um, I didn't put a memo in there, but if we could get a motion um, to approve and not to exceed six thousand uh, for the for the staff to move forward with the approving the inventory for, for the review part. Yeah, here a could I have a motion, please? So moved. Second. And roll call. Uh, Commissioner Greenfield? Yes. Commissioner Lane? Yes. Commissioner Raymore? Yes. Commissioner Reeder? Yes. Commissioner Walsh? Yes. Commissioner Weber? Yes. President of Newman? Yes. Thank you. We accomplished a lot with our new business tonight. Um, written communications and community comments uh, and correspondence. We do have um, letters that are included in here um, from uh, Bill Gamron and Lee Gamron. You can have a letter from Senator Bob Morgan and who's in the third one? Uh, IDNR uh, congratulating us on the Outlet Grant. Senator Bob Morgan uh, also congratulating us on Brandon Peter White, who's a resident. Uh, and it is through that if your information, we're, we're dealing with that staff level and looking at some staff that might have been part of a Eagle Scout project or something that was done in the beginning uh, previously. So we're, we're looking at that. Okay. Um, may I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. And all in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all.